Hey now, Metal Mike coming at ya. It is Thursday. 2-13-13. What am I doing? I'm down in the basement doing a little skateboard. Yep. You better believe it. I actually used to skateboard back in the day. Unbelievable. But now with a torn calf, bad knee, those days are over. But I'll tell you what, maybe someday we'll get that dream. Not maybe someday, we will get that dream. We're going to build a nice little concrete or blacktop pool in the backyard so I can get up, have a cup of coffee, and do some skateboarding. And that's where this uh, episode is going to lead us today, skateboarding. Now, most collectors and uh, resellers know that skateboards are a huge, huge, uh, desirable, collectible piece by many across the board, especially skateboarders. But in case you don't know, I'm going to go ahead and let you know about it. As an old skateboarder back in the 1980s, which was really the prime of skateboarding as far as I'm concerned, at its all-time peak, nowadays everyone is just brutal and they can do everything. But back in the 1980s, you had Tony Hawk, who was revolutionary in uh, the things that he could do. Christian Hasoy, uh, uh, Nadis Coppas, if I remember his name right. Um, there were skateboard companies like 8th Street, Dogtown. Vision, and they still all exist. Elva, now I'm trying to just I'm calling them off the top of my head. But these are the, the skateboards that are highly desirable, and there's huge, huge freaking value on it. Now, back in the late 1980s, I was blessed enough, I had the ultimate job in the world. I worked at a skateboard shop. We had a ramp in the back. It was called the Vicious Circle Skateboard Shop. It was in St. Paul, Minnesota, and it was on Rice Street, 873 Rice Street. That building has now been torn down and is long gone. But it was the perfect dream. It was a small little shop with a nice big bay little window in the front. Nice big little, doesn't make sense, does it? But that's a fact of it. And what was great about it is we had a tiny shop and there was an apartment in the back. And we were young, I was 20 years old. My buddy was 20 years old and he was the owner of the shop and I ran it for him. And we had every skateboard that you can dream of. Now had I known at the time, we would put in orders of 500 bucks and we would get maybe three to four boxes of t-shirts, stickers. Uh, trucks, wheels, bearings, every frickin' thing you can desire. Helmets, we had it all. We really did. We really went after everything that was on the market. At the time, skateboarding wasn't what it is today. You know, there was no internet. This was just all local. And being here in Minnesota, where the skateboarding community is not huge, because number one, Minnesota's not huge, but we were a real renegade, rough, tough, hardcore, old-school skateboarders. We weren't doing uh, McTwists and stuff on ramps. We were bombing down downtown uh, uh, parking ramps and huge hills with no abandon, slamming on concrete repeatedly, repeatedly. <sighs> and that's why I wonder why I'm so banged up today. Well, anyway, getting back to it. Anything from the 1980s is a hot, hot piece. Even the generic boards are of value. There were... Uh, all these offshoots that came out of Kmart and Target and stuff. There was Rude Dog. A lot of you may remember that. It was so generic and almost laughable at the time. But the graphics on these old boards were amazing. And then you have the era before that, the 1970s, where you, and it, if you remember those, they, were, they had a nice big point on them. They were real rocket-like, and they were little, and they were dangerous. Those have a huge value on it. And you have the pre even 1960s with the originals where they're, uh, you'll find the real early ones which have roller skate wheels on them and uh, steel wheels and tiny little planks of wood. But the 1980s, now a perfect example, this is a board that I got from a buddy of mine. He bought it in about 19, I would say 1990, 91 at the very latest. When I moved in with him, uh, you've seen him in some of my videos, Todd Gags. Uh, he, he loved the fact that I skated, and he started skateboarding, so he went out and he bought this board. Now let me see if there's a name on it. I don't even see it, so I don't even know who this, this guy is, but great graphics on it. It's got uh, tracker ultralights on it, and it's got uh, rat bones on it. Just freaking awesome. Anyway, a few years ago, all my skateboards are gone. Like I, was, I should get back to, is when we had that skateboard shop and we would make those huge orders of 500 bucks. At the time, that was a lot of money. We, if I had just taken those skateboards and put them into uh, storage, if I had only known, right? It always falls back on that. If we'd only known what we know now when we were younger. And uh, so that's another area that you could get into, a huge area that uh, is always open. 
you sit there and say, well, what do I do? If I go out and I buy all the collectible toys, remember, if an action figure comes out now, you've got a thousand guys going out and buying that same action figure. Really, a market that's still kind of low, it's hot, of course, you know, there's tons of collectors, and a lot of guys do do this, but it would be a safe bet if you were a young collector, just going out and buying skateboards, new releases of the hottest skaters, the graphics on these pieces are beautiful, they're pieces of art. Going out and buying them at retail prices, or even buying them through Thrasher magazine in the back and probably even getting a better uh, deal. Whatever the case, with shipping and etc. But nowadays you probably get some good deals on some skateboards. Put those away for retirement. If you simply bought a skateboard a month if you were a young man and put it away that you like, the value on that and the investment is huge. And matter of fact, while I'm sitting here uh, filming this, I'm thinking, dang, 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 why am I not doing this? I'm going to start doing it. I'm going to start buying uh, a skateboard a month. And, you don't, and when I talk about a skateboard, you're buying just the board. You're not buying the, uh, the, the, uh, the, um, uh, <laughs> uh, you're not buying the wheels. You're not buying all that. You're not buying, uh, the trucks. That's the word that escapes me. I should be embarrassed being an old skater, but I'm not. So, that being said, even I am going to start doing this now. Just simply buying a board a month or two months, three months, whatever the case. Great investments. Skateboards, 1980s. Now that's something that you could still find at a garage sale. If you get out there and look and look and look. Not so easy, but I'll give you an example. Last year I went to a garage sale and it was horrible. It was all closed. It was just garbage. And I, of course I got out of the van. Now this is a big mistake a lot of us are making at this point, myself included. We're doing the drive-by garage sale, Pete. Where we're looking, we're like, ah, it looks like crap. I'm not going to get out of the vehicle. Get out of the vehicle. You have to do it. There's many times where I've learned from this thing. You'll go in there and there's nothing. And then, boom, you look over and there's a vintage skateboard from 1970. And how much is it? 50 cents. That's what you can get them at. I've got a whole collection of them I've been stashing away. Nothing spectacular, but I think that I can make up for that now because I am going to start buying a board as an investment uh, every now and then and get for retirement because these boards will go up. They're pieces of art and they're going to be desirable. And right now, the kids that are buying these skateboards are more than likely 90% of them are using them. So what ends up happening is, is when we buy these skateboards now, let's say we're doing that, we're getting one a month or every two months we're picking up one, whatever the case, uh, we're buying a skateboard. Now the kids that are skating these boards now are very young. As they get into their 20s and 30s, as they get older, they're going to go, you know what, I wish I had that board. And then that's where the, the, the uh, supply and demand comes into place. And that's where you have that board, and suddenly, boom, it's going to the moon. Look them up on eBay. Not every skateboard is worth a ton of money, but a good bet, anything from the 80s is going to bring you anywhere between 800 bucks and who knows, 1000 plus if you get the right one. You get an old dog town or something, holy mackerel. Alright, let's film a couple more things for you that I picked up. Here's one that I picked up, I bet you about almost three years ago. This is a great piece. It's all made out of metal, mid-century. Let's use the keyword everybody uses, madmen, all these words. These are keywords that people use on Craigslist and eBay, etc., to pull people in. I believe even steampunk is coming into play now. So, it's industrial. So you would call this mid-century, industrial, all steel. It's just really mod, groovy, funky. It's just a lamp. I probably paid two, three bucks for it at a church sale. Haven't sold it. I've had it on Craigslist now for quite some time, for 45 bucks. I've had a few bites on it, but a lot of games, a lot of fooling around. Haven't sold it. Here's another great piece that sits waiting to be sold at some point. I'm going to wait this one out, though. Found this at a garage sale a few years ago. Look at this. It's a Lost in Space Robbie the Robot. Now, he's in rough shape. He's missing his hands, and his, his innards on the bottom are shot to hell. The motor's hanging out by two wires, but still... Whatever, still a looker. It's a relic piece. There is value in it now, but we're going to wait this one out. It's a good bet to go up in that kind of condition. One more piece I've been sitting on now for a few years. I picked this up at a garage sale uh, a while ago. It's called the Battle Wagon. Early 1960s, I would bet you. It's quite large. If you look at my hand, it's a battleship. And it is cool as hell, isn't it? Now look at this. Got all these guns on here. These ones are broken off, sadly. Got this man here, gun missing, turret. Now, these would shoot almost like little rockets, which are long gone. Here's your nice signal. Observation deck. 
with the windows. Just a freaking great piece. They don't make toys like this anymore. If you actually, I seen there was a commercial for it on YouTube from the 1960s in black and white. Stunning, stunning piece. D batteries. It would drive. Big meaty toy. Look at that. Battery compartment door is gone. Looks like the wheel in the front is gone. So it's got some issues. Now I've had this locally for sale for quite some time for 60 bucks. Now they're bringing anywhere from, uh, well, you could say 60 bucks up to 100 plus on eBay, but they don't come up that often. Now why am I not putting this on eBay? Well, number one, I haven't gotten around to it. I've had it on Craigslist, even though I'm not getting any bites on it. It's big. This is a big boy here to ship this. Remember, it's delicate. It's hard plastic. That's the Dickens. It's going to cost you, and it's going to be some work to ship it. You say, well, I'll just go buy a box and box it up. Well, yeah, of course you can do that, but that is pricey, and the bigger the box, the more the packing, the more the weight, the more expensive the shipping. And it's not easy. I prefer small things. Now, here's an example. I picked these up, if you noticed, uh, on uh, one of my videos, I bet you about a month and a half back. I got a stack of little golden books. Well, I had these on eBay, and the best one was the little black sambo. It brought $76. Now, this is the second one I've had in a year. This is marked 57 25 cents. It's in rough condition. It's got some torn pages and stuff, but overall, not too bad. Looks it was like it was given as a gift in 1957. But at that kind of turnover, you can't go wrong. So, Metal Mike signing out. Just a little bit of rambling. Vintage skateboards. Old toys, old robots. These are the things that we just love to collect, isn't it? And uh, this is just a good investment for the future. And that's basically where we're at on it. You can never go wrong with pieces like this if you don't overpay. You get them cheap at garage sales. Keep your nose to the grind. Thrift stores, get out there and hunt. I guess I should show you one more piece. It was actually a mistake. It was at a, but yet I could maybe break even on it. I was at Savers the other day, and I found these Gabriel very old model kit boxes now they were marked eight dollars frickin through the roof now if they were inside here it would be worth eight dollars because i looked them up on ebay they were bringing great money with my phone which i had with me i was able to do a search right there right in front of them